everyone, my name is Melissa Bauman. I am the program manager here at Erie Metro Parks. I am at the Enchanted Cottage today and we are going to learn all about monarch butterflies. Who likes monarchs? <laughs> they are one of my favorite animals. It's probably one of my favorite things that we do here at the park. Uh, we do raise, release, and tag monarch butterflies and we'll talk about that later. Uh, so what we do is we go out and we gather some eggs. We don't gather a lot, just enough to be able to show people how their life cycle works and what they look like. So the Enchanted Cottage is one of my favorite places to go look for eggs. That's because it usually has some of the best milkweed, which is the only plant that monarchs will lay their eggs on. So let's start off trying to find some milkweed so that you guys all know what you're looking for. All right, doesn't take us long and we found some. This is right at the trailhead. Uh, if you were to park at the cottage over there, walk straight over to the first trail, here it is. Uh, so this is common milkweed. There are several different species of milkweed that are at our parks. Uh, this park also has swamp milkweed and butterfly weed. And we'll see if we can find either one of those in a little bit. But this is common milkweed. Everything's kind of past the flower stage, so they have these really pretty pink and purple flowers. And you can see those things right there. Those are the seed pods just starting to form. How you know it's milkweed is you can break off a leaf. And you see that milky white substance that comes out? That's a good indication that you have milkweed. So while we're out here, we're going to take a quick look and see if we can find any eggs. And I already spot one. There's one right there. I know it's hard to see on the camera. I'll see if I can find a picture. They're super tiny. They usually lay them on the underside of the leaf. They're in the teardrop shape. They're off white and they have striations or stripes all over them. Let's see if we can find any more. Oh, there's one. That right there is not an egg. That's just milkweed sap that has come out and dried. Milkweed in itself is an entire ecosystem. You find tons of different animals on it. Okay, I was able to find some butterfly weed. This is butterfly weed. So it's got these bright orange flowers. Okay, so I couldn't find any caterpillars and I didn't see any butterflies <laughs> while I was at the Enchanted Cottage earlier, uh, but that's okay. We have a couple that I have back at Osborne Metro Park that we have. I also had a couple butterflies come out this morning, so we are good. So let's talk about the life cycle of a monarch butterfly. A life cycle, first of all, is when a animal starts as something, turns into something else and turns into something else. Can you think of anything that might have a life cycle? Toads, frogs, salamanders, butterflies, they all have a life cycle. A monarch butterfly starts as that teeny tiny egg that I showed you earlier and they're in the egg for about three days and then they turn into the caterpillar and they're in the caterpillar stage for about two weeks and they grow so fast. A caterpillar's main job is to eat and they eat and eat and eat. And the only thing that they eat is milkweed. So remember that plant we saw earlier? That's their diet. That's what they're gonna chow down on. Uh, I do have a couple I don't have any teeny tiny ones, but this guy is about four, maybe five days old. So still pretty tiny, but when they're hatched, they're the size of that teeny tiny egg. They're so, so small. 
and then they grow very, very quickly. So this one's about four or five days old. This one is about a week old. So just in another three or four days, look how much bigger it is. They're huge. And then this guy is getting ready to form its chrysalis. So it just hung upside down. So they kind of spin, it's kind of like a spider web at the top up there. And then they hang upside down for about eight hours in this J shape. And then they'll turn into the chrysalis. So the chrysalis is actually formed underneath their skin so they just kind of shed their skin so from the J to the chrysalis it only takes two minutes it is pretty cool form this really pretty chrysalis that has those gold specks all over it. They spend about two weeks in the chrysalis and then they come out as the butterfly. And when they come out as the butterfly, they are not cute. They kind of look like a crumpled up tissue. So then they come out as the monarch butterfly. So monarchs are bright orange and black because this is a warning sign to other animals that they're poisonous. Milkweed is poisonous, so since the caterpillars are eating the milkweed, the caterpillars and the butterflies actually become poisonous because of that. So the difference between a boy and a girl, this one is a boy, can you see? those black dots on their hind wing down here. So boys have black dots, those are pheromone packets. Their veins or those black lines all over them are also thinner than the female. All right, so we're gonna let this guy go. Oh. 
This is another little male that we hatched and you can see their feet and their antenna and then they have this tongue that's called a proboscis. So this round thing right here, that's what they stick out and that's what they drink nectar with. All right, we're gonna let them go, you ready? I'm sure you're wondering why in the world am I talking about monarchs as much as I'm talking about monarchs. Well, monarch butterflies are one of those few animals that migrate, especially butterflies. They travel all the way from Canada to Mexico in one trip. So their migration happens in the fall time. Around here, we usually have peak migration towards the end of August. Uh, so that's actually starting to come up. So keep an eye out for monarchs in your backyard or around your city. They make a one-way trip in August. They go to the Oyamel fir forest in Mexico and they've never been there before. They have nobody to follow. Could you make it to Mexico in one trip? Nope. <laughs> I know I couldn't. <laughs> So they go to Mexico to the Oyamel fir forest. They overwinter there. The migrators, they actually live about six to eight months and they're born with extra fatty deposits, which is why they can live so long. Then in early spring, the monarchs that are in Mexico, they will uh, lay their eggs and then they pass away. So when that next generation is born, they go a little farther north, so maybe to Texas. They lay their eggs and they pass away. So the breeders only live about four to six weeks and they just travel short distances up north. It takes four generations for them to come back to Ohio in the summertime. Isn't that neat? <laughs> Well, monarch butterflies, their population over the past 20 years has actually declined about 90%, which is pretty significant. So this isn't just an American issue. This is Canada, the United States, and Mexico. So we all have to work together to help protect this species. Remember how I talked about that they only lay their eggs and caterpillars only eat milkweed? Well. People used to think that milkweed was a weed, so they would rip it out of their yard and there was nowhere for the butterflies to lay their eggs. That's a big problem. So now we're working really hard. The state governments are working really hard. Everywhere is working really hard to plant milkweed. So we're doing lots of education about why you should keep milkweed in your yard or in your gardens, how it's really beneficial. Remember I talked about how it was an ecosystem of itself and there's lots of other bugs that use it as a food source. So it's a great thing to have in your yard, something super easy to put in your yard. Uh, if you do put it in your yard, just make sure that you're planting native species. So sometimes um, like garden centers, uh, sell tropical species and our monarchs usually won't lay their eggs on it. So just kind of do some research and read your labels and you'll be fine. The other reason why monarch butterflies, their population has greatly decreased is the Oyamel fir forest in Mexico where they overwinter has been logged. So over the years, lots and lots of that land has gone away. So they don't have the right overwintering habitat in order to survive the winter. So that's important to protect. There's also a couple different uh, parasites and a fungus that affects them. Uh, there's parasites that will lay their eggs inside the caterpillars. The caterpillar doesn't survive, but the egg of the wasp or the fly that laid it in the caterpillar, they'll survive. Gross, right? <laughs> there's a fungus called OE which the adults transfer from plant to plant and it doesn't have too much of, a, of an effect on the adults but when the caterpillars are infected with this OE a lot of times it's a problem when they form their chrysalis they either don't form the chrysalis correctly or when they come out of the chrysalis they are missing they're misformed they're different colored their wings don't dry out correctly things like that so they just don't survive then as the adult butterfly I know this is a bunch of doom and gloom, so I am sorry about that, but there are things that you can do. So I already talked about planting milkweed in your yard or leaving milkweed in your yard. Uh, if you have a section of your yard that you can let 
that grow up with natural flowers and milkweed, that's fantastic. You should definitely do that. Um, also, just planting native varieties of flowers, that's perfect. That will actually help lots of different kinds of wildlife, not just monarch butterflies. Earlier I had mentioned that we tag monarch butterflies. Sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not like with um, like birds, we don't put like a metal band on their leg. It's actually a sticker. There's a citizen science group called Monarch Watch, and their sole purpose is to monitor the population of monarch butterflies. So we put these little stickers on their wings during migration season, and they've learned how far monarchs travel, how long it takes them to get there, how many survive, all of that just from this teeny little sticker that goes on their wings. Uh, in the past, we used to raise quite a few butterflies because uh, since their population was down so much, we were trying to help their population. Well, now they're saying that monarch butterflies that are raised, maybe inside a house that has air conditioning or something like that, they're not getting that temperature change and all of those good nature functions that they need in order to survive. So Monarch Watch last year was saying that they would like us to tag mainly butterflies that are wild caught compared to ones that are raised. We have switched from raising a bunch of monarchs to going out and netting them during the migration season just to tag them. Uh, so we do keep a couple butterflies and well the whole life cycle just so that I have something that I can then show you because like today when I went out and I couldn't find any caterpillars that's not so good when you're trying to teach people about monarch butterflies. So we just do a couple now just so we have a life cycle going. I know some people like to do this in their house. Uh, my best advice right now is to just kind of let them do their thing on your milkweed. You can protect them outside, maybe put a net around your milkweed if you're worried about predators getting them or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, they're recommending that we kind of let nature do its thing. Uh, they have said that the monarchs that are raised inside, they don't migrate. They're not recovering very many of, many of the ones that have been raised by people compared to the ones that are um, caught outside. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something about monarch butterflies and that maybe you love them a little bit more and I've inspired you to do um, some good out in your backyard. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, you can send me an email at mbauman, B-A-U-M-A-N at eriemetroparks.org. We'll see you soon.